Well, we're here in the Village of Valmont Council Chambers with uh, Village of Valmont Mayor Owen Torgerson and uh, Village of Valmont CAO Eric Depineau. Uh We are here, gentlemen, to talk about the uh, upcoming, well, first of all, congratulations, Mr. Mayor, on your acclamation and your second term. Uh, but we're here to talk about what's happened here in Valmont, and, and uh, I'd like you to kind of walk us through, uh, for those who really aren't aware, what has happened in terms of, of this election. Well, thank you very much, uh, Michael. It's uh, just a privilege to be able to co continue serving uh, the village of Elmount in, in the capacity as mayor, acclaimed or otherwise. So back to September the 9th was the closing of the original nomination period for candidates running for council. We had not received five submissions by that date, so we needed to extend uh, that period to September the 12th. So folks had the opportunity to uh, pick up nomination packages, get it signed by uh, the, the 10 uh, nominees or nominations, and uh, forward that by 4 p.m. on the 12th. That didn't happen either. And so folks still had an opportunity to challenge the nomination packages put forward by myself, Councillor, uh, Pete Pearson and Councillor Holly Blanchett. That didn't happen, and so on the 17th? 17th. 17th, uh, we were officially acclaimed, meaning that with no other nominations, no challenges to the nomination packages, uh, we will form government uh, as decided on last night on November the 1st. How the appointment process rolls out is quite um, unique. In, in that uh, it is a very staff-oriented uh, process. So um, municipal staff uh, dealing, uh, working alongside uh, municipal affairs staff at the province to kind of iron out some of those details. As you can be well assured, this isn't a common occurrence in this province. So I'll maybe hand it over to you, Eric, to kind of throw out some of those processes. Certainly. So next week on Monday, October the 17th, uh, forms are going to be available both here at the office, um, at 735 Cranberry Drive, as well as on our website. So folks who are interested in seeking a position uh, on this council be able to fill out their forms and submit those to myself all the way up until uh, November the 7th, uh, Monday, 4 p.m., week after the inaugural meeting. Um, throughout that period, Council and myself will be sitting down with those interested uh, to hear a little bit more about why they're interested in the position, to provide some background on you know, what it is that a councillor would be doing during their term. And then from there, a special meeting likely to be held on either the uh, 15, 16, 17th of November, whereby a uh, secret ballot, the members of council, um, the mayor, Councillor Blanchett, uh, Councillor Pearson, forming a quorum of this government body, you know, three out of five seats being filled, uh, would be able to appoint those who have self-nominated. Right, so uh, just to, to take it really back to the basics, we're talking about two vacant seats for, for uh, Village of Elmont Council here. How rare is this? So when we look at uh, examples to build from, working with municipal affairs in the province, uh, we see one example that's happened in recent history on Vancouver Island and one example from uh, a regional district seat. Uh, in some cases those are by-elections, others they are uh, similar to ourselves, general election that didn't have the uh, uptake and uh, interested applicants. So uh, shortly answering your question, it's fairly rare. Right. And what did those communities do in terms of uh, benchmarking for, for what we're doing here? So, so a very similar, uh, similar program, and in each case, uh, nominations received uh, in this manner, either staff or council meeting with those interested nominees as, as we intend to do, and then uh, getting down to, in both cases, a secret ballot uh, to select those two, or one in those cases, a uh, new appointee. So... Uh uh, well, what would you say this is reflective of? Uh, I've had conversations with people and some people say, well, you know, it's just a sign that things are running so well that nobody wanted to challenge the, uh, the situation. Others say, well, it's, it's a question of apathy in terms of uh, uh, just not, a, not an interest in doing it. I know the, the commitment level uh, increased uh, uh, from three years to four years and that uh, turned some people off in terms of, what, what are your thoughts on that? 
There's, I think there's a couple of scenarios here at play, Michael. Um, a, uh, yes, we did a fantabulous job uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, moving our strategic priorities forward. Uh, no doubt in my mind without my head exploding with ego. Um, the other thing I think is what we as an organization offer. Uh, we don't pay well. Uh, we don't have benefits for elected officials. Uh, we do not have committee uh, meeting uh, remuneration. Uh, so if I'm somebody that's on the fence and I'm looking to come into local government because I think I have something to contribute and I'm working three part-time jobs already, this doesn't add any sort of um, re reward other than sitting on council and serving one's community, which is probably the biggest reward I've ever uh, been able to uh, muster. But we don't bring a lot to the table in terms of compensation. And uh, some conversations that I've had, that is reflected in, in some of that. So we can, I think, shall and should do better in terms of uh, getting those good folks into these chambers to serve their community. Right. And from a, from a uh, technical standpoint, what are, what are the requirements for somebody to apply for nomination for this position? So the criteria for the appointment process is the same as what's outlined for the general election. So a person needs to be 18 years of age. There's some uh, citizenship requirements. There's a requirement to have been in the uh, province for a number of days. Um, uh, I believe it's 60 days prior to? Six months. Six months, pardon me. Uh, had, had the six right six months prior to the uh, date of the appointment so the appointment uh, criteria are the same as uh, for a councillor running in the general election that wraps up uh, this coming weekend um, okay so they they're not required to be a, a resident of the village of Alma they are not uh, they follow the, the the same sort of general rules as the uh, BC local government general elections Okay. Well, since this is sort of a uh, uh, a job advertisement, let's put it that way. What what in your uh, position as mayor? What would you think would be good qualifications for someone who would want to run uh, for a position on the council? Compassionate about one's community, a uh, bit of a fiscal background, so we're able to define uh, budgets. So one of the largest responsibilities that we uh, have as uh, members of council. This is an organization with a, with a set budget. We uh, have the opportunity to uh, increase service delivery in some area where we feel it's important. You set strategic priorities and you go after those. Right. Worst case scenario, uh, playing devil's advocate here, you don't get any nominations. What happens after that? So the Local Government Act uh, describes that uh, circumstance. So the Village of Elmont, we have 30 days from our inaugural meeting on November 1st uh, to fill these vacancies, our own, through that process uh, previously described. If we're unsuccessful in doing that, uh, we don't have two people or more step forward. Uh, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs uh, then becomes involved in helping uh, get those appointees in place. Um, what that process looks like uh, is undefined at the moment, but uh, the responsibility does shift from the village to the province to fill those vacancies. To, to, to add to that, uh, I have been assured in a conversation by Minister Nathan Cullen of Municipal Affairs that he does not want to be involved in this process uh, and that we will do everything that we can to fill these uh, appointments. Uh, prior to the 30-day deadline following the uh, inaugural meeting. Right. And so the, the final determination, if you do receive more than two, it's going to be a council secret ballot uh, in terms of, uh, of how these people would actually be. And, and what is the term? They're not elected, uh, appointed? Uh, they would be appointed by ballot generally as would any other elected official. But in this case, instead of having... 600 and change eligible voters, we have three elig eligible voters being the incumbent uh, members of council. Right. It's no different a process really than if, if someone resigns midterm, right? Well, if someone resides midterm, uh, we do have the opportunity to go back to by-election. Um, very expensive. 
right. uh, but so it, it so can be appointed it can be it can be yeah. uh, but in this case again it'll be the three votes of the sitting members of council okay and once that in, those individuals are appointed, then uh, all the rights and responsibilities that are afforded to a councillor elected through the uh, a more typical process uh, apply. So there's no no difference uh, between somebody who comes from the appointment process or those that were acclaimed or elected uh, this week at coming or back on September 19th. All right. And let's just lay out a, a little bit about what's expected from a council uh, member here in terms of, I know the, the commitment is, is stated to be part-time. However, uh, I had a conversation with uh, Councillor McLean not too long ago, and she told me she had 15 meetings that week. So that's, that's pretty good for a part-time position. What, what is actually, uh, uh, in terms of the way you have your, your, uh, your council set up in terms of, of committee appointments, and uh, um, then there's the UBCM uh, meetings and, and other regional meetings, what is actually expected of people so they get a better idea? I would generally equate this position with that of a university course. So every hour of meetings that you attend, you would generally have two hours of prep. Uh, so if you have two council meetings a month, that's three hour, that's six hours already. Uh, you'll have three to five committee appointments. Uh, again, so looking around, you know, 16 to 24 hours of uh, committed time per month. Right, and the the salary is is, uh, is uh, stipulated, and I can't recall exactly. Do you know offhand what the salary is? I think it's around 9,100. Uh, we just gave ourselves a raise last night. Okay. All right, so it, it definitely has to be somebody who's who's passionate and, and has the time uh, to to uh, commit to serving their community as well, right? Oh, absolutely, and. Uh, we do look forward to those uh, looking to serve their community in, in this fashion and uh, hopefully uh, we can, or no, we will find uh, two uh, good, responsible, compassionate folks, uh, talented and willing to uh, serve their community. Great. And once again, uh, the final date when the actual council vote will take place will be? A uh, special meeting uh, currently planned for the 15th, 16th, 17th of November. Uh, we're just arranging schedules at this time, but uh, by the end of that week, uh, ending on the 17th, uh, we should have our appointees uh, appointed. There you go. Well, you can't accuse Valmont of not doing things uh, outside the box occasionally, right? <laughs> uh, no, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, Michael. Uh, always uh, a privilege to uh, work with our partners at BCTV. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.